Hi, I'm John Hovanesian. Frequently these days, it seems we see the approval of a new lens implant offering with a new set of features and a new set of characteristics that are designed to serve a different set of patients than we've ever served with a lens before. And I frequently uh, am told by colleagues that the process of picking a lens recommendation for a patient seems a little bit like a dark science, uh, sort of like the sorting hat in Harry Potter's Hogwarts School of Witchcraft, um, you know, where mystical insights uh, sort new, in, uh, new students into different houses in the school. Um, actually, there is some sense in choosing lens implants for different patients. And while every experienced refractive cataract surgeon has his or her own preferences and experiences, I'd like to present the following as an approach that works well for many. Um, first, let's assume that most patients uh, with cataract surgery want to have some degree of spectacle freedom. And most have at least uh, a half diopter of anticipated astigmatism to be corrected when they do go through surgery. Let's also divide patients among those who desire a binocular range of vision from distance to intermediate to near versus those who are mostly motivated for, bi for binocular distance vision. And separately, let's consider those who might want monovision because they've either had a positive uh, past experience with it or at least are very open to the idea of trying monovision with their implant. Well, like many practices, uh, we use a software package called MD Backline that automatically gives us those insights from incoming patients and actually drives their understanding and acceptance of premium lenses. Armed with that information, we then compare it with um, the uh, clinical information about a patient uh, to sort out what's appropriate for them. And I like to sort these patients into really three groups of clinical readiness for a premium lens. And let's call those green, yellow, and red. Now each color represents a stratum of ocular health and also visual potential. Um, often comorbidities that can put a patient in one group or another can be treated to move a patient from red to yellow or yellow to green. So for example, dry eye or basement membrane dystrophy or Salzman's nodules and even some retinal pathologies can respond well to medical or surgical treatment. And generally speaking, it's best to address those kinds of com com comorbidities first before performing cataract surgery for these patients. So let's start by talking about this green category of patients. Uh, people in this green category basically have fully healthy eyes, uh, except for cataract. They have no prior refractive surgery, no corneal pathology of significance, no significant dry eye, and really no meaningful maculopathy. These eyes are candidates for really any technology that suits them best. And assuming they want a binocular range of vision from far to near, the new panoptics lens from Alcon, at least in our experience, provides much higher spectacle freedom than any previous presbyopia correcting lens that we've used. Uh, I performed a study of 60 bilateral panoptics patients along with Quentin Allen and Michael Jones, and we found that 83% of our panoptics patients never wore glasses for any activity. Now that is more than double the rate of spectacle freedom that we've seen with any previous lens or lens combination in about 18 years studying these kinds of outcomes. Now any multifocal or any EDOF lens like Symphony is also very reasonable for these patients, as is the crystal lens, crystal lens and TrueLine lens system, which works still very well for many patients. Uh, the light adjustable lens is also a widely applicable lens, and although it uh, does not offer a significant range of vision in each eye, its precision is remarkable, and that makes it suitable for those who are willing to give a little bit of extra money and extra time for extra visits. Um, whether it's used binocularly for distance vision or for monovision, it's a choice whose popularity, appropriately, I think, is growing. Uh, the Vividi lens from Alcon is another appealing offering for green and other patients with about a diopter and a half of range of vision in each eye, and it has no more glare or halos than a monofocal lens. Uh, this works extremely well for mini monovision, um, and other options for those green patients who want uh, monovision would also be a toric monofocal lens or an LRI with a, a straight monofocal lens, and of course, crystal lens and true line. Okay, let's talk about the yellow category of patients. Patients in this group uh, have mildly abnormal eyes, uh, previous LASIK with total corneal higher order aberrations less than 0.5 microns might fit here, mild irregular astigmatism um, from previously uh, treated corneal disease, mild dry eye, or even mild maculopathy could be in this category. 
generally these yellow patients um, have conditions that should not reduce the best corrected vision any more than the cataract itself would. Multifocal and EDOF lenses still can be used here, but with caution because um, uh, these patients have not completely normal eyes. Uh, Panoptics works well, Symphony works well, Technus and Restore, Vividi as well as Crystal Lens are good choices, uh, but again with more limited expectations and less precision. Um, these patients require extra counseling and time, and for binocular distance acuity, again the LAL is a reasonable choice, as is a toric monofocal or crystal lens and true line. Um, a simple monofocal with an LRI also works for these patients, and of course the same combinations could be used for monovision. Okay, let's talk about the red category. Now here I would say in one word, beware. Uh, this is a challenging group of patients because they have a loss of best corrected acuity from their comorbidities. These are patients who have RK and some PRK and LASIK eyes who had higher corrections or significantly abnormal topographies. They would all fall into this category, as does keratoconus and eyes with mild maculopathy that would reduce vision by one or more lines. Um, Really, more than two lines of loss of acuity, though, probably makes them not a candidate for many different uh, premium options. But again, a conversation with the patient about what's realistic is always appropriate. So for these patients, for binocular range of vision, we really don't have many good choices. The Vividi and the Crystal Lens are probably the two safest we have, but with very limited expectations. Certainly, all multifocals and symphony probably are best avoided because they just don't achieve the kinds of results we want. So for binocular distance vision, um, the LAL or torque monofocals, true line or crystal lens or LRIs certainly can be safely employed, again with very tempered expectations. Monovision uh, in patients with significant non-cataract ocular pathology generally doesn't work that well. Uh, the vision in each eye generally uh, doesn't support a functional monovision result, assuming both eyes are in the red category. And most patients end up just wearing glasses um, in the end to try to offset whatever result they got with monovision. Now naturally, this set of guidelines I'm giving may not apply to all patients. Uh, a lot of variables could alter the best choices for individuals, uh, including the status of both eyes. But considering both ocular health and patient desires and achieving satisfaction uh, in a greater and greater percentage of patients is possible nowadays as IOL technologies continue to improve. I'm John Hovanesian. I'm a consultant or I have an equity interest in Alcon, Bausch & Lohm, Johnson & Johnson Surgical Vision, MD Backline, and RX Site.